How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting and welcome back to Muvla Monday where we're here on Muvla Total Eclipse. But what's really interesting is the fact that while you're watching this, most likely I am actually watching a Total Eclipse. Yeah, there's a big Total Eclipse that's going across the United States and I'm close enough that it's not going to take too much of travel for me to get to it and I'm not going to miss that. Granted, there's a good chance there's going to be cloud cover. We're in the middle of spring and we're definitely, you know, like even across the entire country in places that it's going over where normally they they don't tend to get a whole lot of cloud cover. It looks like there's a good chance of it. So I might not be able to see as much directly. Thankfully, I've seen another one before, but I still hope I get to catch this one because this is supposed to be a really spectacular one. But regardless of all of that, it's just kind of a cool like coincidence that it happened to land on a Monday and this is when this is coming out. Um, also, thank you so much for your patience. I know you're probably expecting an episode last week, but it was April 1st. I I don't have a great history of doing interesting April Fool's stuff, but I decided to try something, and it was fun, it was different. It's had some pretty decent responses, but I'm still happy to be back doing this. So, While it's the real Total Eclipse has very little to do with the story today, I just thought that addendum would be pretty fun, and I'm sure I'll have some fun stories about it next time. But I'm recording this a little earlier than usual, so yeah, it's still like five, six days away right at this point. So hopefully, you know, you enjoy that, but just understand that, like... If you're watching this on the day it happened, I'm probably, like, watching the sun with my eyes covered. I'm not completely stupid, but, you know, anyway. Uh, another thing that's really interesting about all of this, though, is I was kind of, I was going through the saves, and, like, because of the way they set up this system for this, you know, re-release of Total Eclipse, uh... It looks like they had they decided to put like a limited number of save files and we've had more parts than they have save files I think there's like 50 um, and I typically make a save per part It makes it so that I have a bit of a security in case I need to go back and capture footage from a scene or Like there's a mix-up in the audio So I tend to just use a different save spot for everything and most visual novels have hundreds of file slight save slots Because most save slots for a visual novel are really small. They're just like little like a little like chain of bytes that just take up almost no memory to record where you are and even what choices you've made. Uh, but for some reason they limited it, probably because they were optimizing this for a uh, release on mobile. Regardless of that, I happened to be looking into the files and trying to make sure I load the right save file. And I realized that I started this like a, like a year ago. Like we've crossed over the year mark of when I started this. And frankly, I don't feel like I've been covering this game for, for over a year, but I have been, and that's the thing is like, I haven't missed a whole lot of days. You know, occasionally I've gotten, I've, I've had like one or two sick days and then we had the power outage. I think that interrupted a whole week, but impressive that we can enjoy a series so long, even though it doesn't feel like it's been that long. But you know, when you count in weeks, 52 parts, that's a year, but yeah. Anyway, enough about all that reminiscing. Thank you so much. Let's jump right into it. So. Yuya is absolutely in trouble, and he's got to kind of decide where's his pure loyalties lie. If he just sits down and shuts up, he's going to be in the best graces of the United States military. Everything's going to go smoothly. He'll probably get a promotion and start working on the ne the step up from the F-22 Raptor, which modern day is the F-35. Oh, what are they calling that one? I, I've been I've heard about it, and I, I I think if I had been thinking about it, I would have like refreshed my memory on it. Like, it's the plane that's, like, really good at stealth, like, even more so than the F-22 if you are on the stealth model. And it's so good that when they had a technical error during a test flight and the pilot ejected, the plane didn't crash. Well, it did crash, but it crashed softly because it has, like, a safety feature where it tries to land itself. But they couldn't find it because it, it was so stealthy, even though we knew its last trajectory and general uh, area, it took like days to find and I think it just landed in the middle of a field and a farmer like happened upon it and so he's like oh by the way there's a thing here so yeah that's cool <laughs> anyway let's just jump into it shall we all right yeah what are you up to it's night already but no one's come back to their rooms newfound resolution and all the fate of my friends looms large in my mind as do Weller's words from after the terrorist attack アメリカの軍人だ。他の容疑者と同じ行動を取ったにせよ。我々がそれを精査する際に、君が積み上げてきた実績とそれに裏打ちされた信頼の厚みがものを言う。And again, like him saying that is a tactic. Like if you're looking for people who are corrupt who are willing to sell out the United States and such, 
that you can't approach that job effectively without recognizing that anybody from the bottom to the top could be susceptible to the influence if the bright buttons are pushed. That's actually why if you are, have security clearance, one of the things they actually require is they require you to kind of essentially give out sensitive pressure points you might have uh, or, or make them aware of certain weaknesses that could be exploited. And they even ask you to do certain things. I think I mentioned before, but uh, one of the things that they actually are really excited by are people who don't drink because alcohol can be like can remove your inhibitions and can be a common like part of a tactic to kind of extract information and so if you don't drink for whatever reason it's actually a decent selling point because it means you're a lot less likely to have impaired cognitive function or if somebody were to inject you or try and like uh, give you like uh, uh like give you something to remove your in inhibitions uh or you know another wise like kind of derail you it's a lot more noticeable people are likely to pick up on it because you don't tend to be drunk so yeah uh but the fact that he's saying this again like he's saying this to because he wants to inspire and kind of prime you yeah to be loyal to stick to his guns and to feel like he has a duty to the united states just in case hmm I never expected my, that my I'm a real American moment to hit me when I'm under investigation for espionage against the United States. Talk about some sweet irony. いいか。何があろうとお前は黙って米軍の調査に協力しろ。バカなことはするな。お前が裏切って情報を漏らしたなんて誰も思っちゃいねえよ。南部の名門ブリッジスケの出身で。Right. I wondered if there was ulterior motives to that. The thing is now, I'm not sure which it is. Like, is it legitimately just, oh, he's Bridges, he's recognized by the name, let's get him on board? Or do higher ups in the government figure that they, he is, like, a descendant of not just any random Japanese citizen, but of a high-ranking member of the Royal Guard. アメリカの安全保障と発展のため、君は多くのものを戦術機開発に捧げてきた。同じアメリカ人として心から敬意を表する。アメリカへの忠誠心は未人も由来でいないと、私は信じているのだがね。Yeah, see, this is all just like planting seeds of doubt or uh, or essentially kind of trying to prime him for a potential situation where he might be asked to do something disloyal. Hmm. My loyalty towards the United States, huh? Oh yeah, and again too, like it's pretty, it's pr very likely that the, the, the program was very aware of the technology that they were doing and they might have been watching for the right time to intervene. Like, the plan was always to shut this program down. They just wanted to wait and maybe use the program to bait out information from the Soviets or other potential, like, enemies. Heck, even the terrorist attack. Like, it was pretty clear that the Americans had intel that it was going to happen, and instead of just flat out stopping it, they allowed it to happen to allow for the shadow operation that occurred with uh, Leon and his team, and also just to kind of, you know, provide excuses for you know, various other political me measures, and even the undercutting of the current Soviet, like, system by the rev revelation of the Red Line. I can't stop thinking about what happened to the guys, and about what happened to Kriska and Inya after. The Soviets must have been monitoring their vitals, so if they refu uh, refused my rescue attempt, I guess it wasn't anything life-threatening, right? But the Scarlet Twins have been off their game lately, so I can't help but wonder. Hard to had hard to hear any tidbits of information when you're active suspect. Not even freaking gospel, gossip. I'm literally living in a bubble. Son of a bee. When are they gonna set us free? That's right. Yi Fei isn't under investigation. She might have her information to share. Good boy, thinking about our girl. Even if she doesn't know anything, I can always ask her to snoop around. How about what's going on in the Soviet area? In their hangar, anything's fine, as long as the information, anything's fine. She'll ask for a pound of flesh in return, but whatever. I'll deal with it when the time comes. It's the question is which pound of flesh does she want? This is Yuya Bridges. I'm with XFJ Program. Communicate me with, uh, connect, com uh, communicate me with Lieutenant Chu Yufei's room, third unit front. They're going to be listening to your, to your conversation if you call. 
Thomas trying to open my door. Crap, did the MPs notice what I'm up to? How? Whose goes there? Okay. Come on, man. He's up on the knocking. Well, it's just a freaking phone call. Whoa, what? Yeah, yeah. How? What? How? How did you get here? Misha's looking great, by the way. Inya? Oh boy, this has impending international incident written all over it because how could you hurry no to her? She's in trouble. What happened? What's going on? C come inside first, then we'll talk. Great, and since the call went through, now she's panicking. Anyway, I'm impressed you made it here without getting caught. The place is crawling with American MPs. So, to reach it out with her senses can sense the minds of people, and while it's uncomfortable, it lets her know exactly where everyone is. No wonder. I see. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that, but good thing she didn't get caught in the way. Let's get down to business. What's happening to Kriska? Here's the thing. Honestly, the best we can hope for would be to try and get her asylum in the United States, right? To get her to ask for asylum. Because given her status, I imagine she'd actually be given it. She's not a normal citizen, she's a masterful pilot. So if she asked for asylum, the United States would leap at that chance because she has some very important information. But that's the thing, that's what the United States knows. The Soviets know that not only is she a fantastic pilot, but she's part of Alternative 3's like, reconstituted program. She knows way too much. As in, like, they might, like, if they haven't done the Suicide Squad brain bomb, I would be surprised because she's way too valuable an asset. So if, see, she, if we try to smuggle her out and we somehow actually succeeded, we got her to U.S. territory, and the and she, and she actually asked for asylum, and the U.S. accepted it. She would not be allowed to step outside. In fact, her conditioning could be just triggered. What if they just triggered her, like, you know, psycho mode? Just to make her go berserk and get herself shot. Like, like I really don't see how we could actually help her, because the only situation I see actually working, potentially, would be the asylum path, and we know that that's not going to fly. So I think we're really in a sticky wicket here, but they don't know that, and I think Yuya would still try. What the? D dispose of her? What, what, what are you talking about? Kriska's not needed. Wait, you mean when we fought against each other? What? Experiment? What the hell? Wait, no. Back up for a second. Dispose of her. You mean like they're going to fire Kriska, right? She's going to be out on the streets because the Scarlet Twins lost just this once? This is ridiculous. Oh, buddy. Oh, you, yeah. Why? I love that he's such an idiot sometimes, but at the same time, it's like, do you not understand? Like, dispose Liz is literal here. I need a hero. Oh boy. I had no idea I was so close to the end of a chapter. So 
So we hear is are they finding out that they are torturing our our mates? No, she's in a cell. I need some more details. Kriska's gonna be disposed of because you guys lost to me. Is that right? Oh. New moon oh. rising. Kriska Sure, but the Berkut's a double seater with no Kriska. There's no one to be there to fly with you. Uh, yeah. Oh wait, Martika, that's your new co-pilot, isn't she? Oh. <sighs> Bitch. Since Kriska's lost to me because uh, Kriska lost to me because she lost her strength or whatever, uh, Martika is stepping in as a replacement. Is that why the Soviet performance this morning and afternoon rounds of the dissimilar aircraft combat training exercise have been like night and day? Because they've been swapping Kriska for Martika? It wasn't Kriska who put me through the ringer, it was Martika. お前らの凄さは素直に認めるよ。だが、今度はそううまくはいかないぜ。全力を上回る全力で来ないと。Oh that's... That's the uh, Now oh, eat your words unfortunately. ま、それは半分冗談だとしても。結果を出せない時のことは言われなくてもよくわかっている。不安を煽っても無駄だ。that's gotta be why Crisco blew up at me. Okay, give me a moment here. Crisco will be disposed of, as in she'll be killed. I'm glad he's with the program. Oh. 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 Well, it. It's still yes. It's just a technical yes. It'll be a long, drawn out. You know, she'll be lab ratted. Figures, Soviet Union is ruthless, but not even the evil empire would kill one of its own surface pilots for no good reason. They did what now? I wonder if they're gonna harvest her for, you know, genetic material. Wait, so people sent to this medical ward or whatever just disappear without a trace. And you're saying you've seen this happen again and again? Mm. Oh, he's like, oh crap, maybe they will kill her. People going into a place and never return? Son of a B, it's so obvious even a kid like her can connect the dots. When you say she'll never return. <laughs> so, they are gonna kill her. She's just not being sent to be killed. It's just an inevitable finale to whatever they are gonna pull. Fetch me. Fetch. What the fetch is this? If a working a surface pilot in the Soviet army wasn't life-threatening enough already. These bees pump you up full of drugs, mess with your head using post-hypnotic suggestions, and the moment you're deemed useless, they kill you? Drug therapy. Post-hypnotic suggestions are common use throughout the front lines. As long as the people with skin are in the game, they say they'll be, they'll, they're will they okay with those treatments, if that's what it takes to recapture their homeland. A foreigner like myself has no right to criticize their methods. But there's a world of difference with treat them treating them like human guinea pigs. And Inya doesn't really understand, but she's so critical to the balance and the formula of what's going on that she would be thrown away only as a last resort. They see Kriska as completely replaceable, easy to replicate. Inya is special, though. Now I remember, you told me something along those lines before, didn't you? That you and Kriska needed to up your game or else they were going to get rid of you. <laughs> Wait a second, it's the same thing happening to Kriska as happening to you. Yeah, but unfortunately in a program like this, they don't see you as people with willpower, they just see you as dolls, so... Fetch! Maybe I can't see the whole picture, but if what Inya is saying is true, she's in danger. Her instincts are screaming at her that this is the case. Fetching heck. These are spiraling out of control so hard I can barely wrap my head around it all. Well, whatever. No choice but to be proactive. 
First things first, I need to confirm whether Inya's story is true. Whether, whether, whatever I choose to do, my actions will have lasting consequences. Oh, man. That's not what Sandak thinks. No, it's not your fault. Don't say that. Oh, fetch me. I don't think we can back off now. Hmm. ミラを殺したのは、お前だ。私、もっと頑張るから。クリスカの分も頑張るから。クリスカ。クリスカ。離れ離れになるなんて。いや。お、what the? Oh, she's blasting us with information. Inya? Kriska? That's... Captain Sandek? Are these Inya's memories? What... was that? Yeah, but he was an idiot, had no idea. He had no idea. Now, okay. Unfortunately, this or this right here, the fact that now he knows this, if Sandek and the rest of them find out that that this not only did this interaction occur, but he got the mind blast and kind of got like everything told to him, like at least enough that a clever person could put together the rest of the information. Like he's on he's on death row now. Special. No, that's way beyond special. Inya, are you saying you're the one who projected those images into my mind? What? Wow, such good pilots. Are you serious? Interesting. So she describes those lights and colors, but we know that um, that Kasumi was much stronger than that because she can hold she can hold like genuine pictures. In fact, when in all like in all alternative, if you please make sure if if somehow you're watching this and you haven't read like Muv Love Alternative, like go get out of here, go read that. But remember. That Akasumi was able to draw pictures of somebody who intentionally didn't exist in reality anymore and maintained that image through a reality wrenching autocorrect to maintain his like connection and tether to this world. It's like clearly she has a much higher capability. And then the perfected, you know, Unit Zero um, was able to essentially access all the powers of the alternative three specials but on like in completely other levels where not only could she read the mind surface thoughts of those around her but she was able to glance into alternate realities at simultaneous parallel thinking like the powers of alternative three are just these are crumbs of just what alternative four ended up bringing about is that why she called me Yuya out of the blue back when we first met? I thought I was hearing things, but gosh darn, the truth is so much more bizarre. That wasn't a matter of great intuition or a woman's sixth sense or whatever. It turns out they can actually look into my head. Yuya mo... ...kowai? What? Atashiga... ...kimochi warui? Here's the thing, it's like... My instinct, of course, here is like, of course not. But then, if you actually were to realize that they can look inside your head, if you actually were to stand in front of a person whom you hardly really knew, especially, or in the other reverse situation, where if you were introduced to somebody saying like, here, this is so-and-so, they can read your mind. That would be a little scary. 
you'd be kind of terrified. And the worst part is that because of human nature, you'd immediately think of everything that you wouldn't want someone to read in your mind because you go, oh no, I don't want them to know about this. And then they would instantly know it. Just knowing somebody can empathic empathically read your thoughts, especially if they could read them like properly, once you know they can do it, pretty much everything you don't want them to know immediately flies into your mind. You'd have to take special training to avoid that. No way! Right, she can read my thoughts. I could never hate you. What research facility? Hmm. It's so dumb, because this argument, like, it totally makes sense, it's human nature, but it's so wrong. I mean, if they're monsters, they're not too shy off of, um, in vitro fertilization or test tube babies. Like, the whole concept behind that is simply a, like, you start a natural process in a lab, and then, like, usually for, uh, in vitro, you then implant it where the natural occursion would occur in a natural, like, birthing situation. For them, it's all done in a tank, and they're injected with, like, alien mutated, uh, alien slash mutated, or at least human DNA that's been mutated by G elements to make, like, super-powered, like, people. So that could, I can understand making people feel like they're monsters, but, like, it's really ironic that people can see them as dolls or as creatures when they see and can talk into and interact with them. They're clearly people, but... Maybe the pure scientists would not see them that way. But even then, I just find it to be a struggle. Like, how could you not see them as people after talking with them for a while? No! <gasps> Don't you ever talk about yourself like that. It doesn't matter what others say. Aww. Fetch me. I don't know which one I want more. Her hugging the bear or you hugging her as the thumbnail. You're not a monster, Inya. You're the same as everyone else. It doesn't matter what others say. It doesn't matter what powers you have. You're human. Yeah! My boy! You might be dense as a black hole, but you at least understand the critical stuff. I don't know why I'm go what what's going on with me. Emotional outbursts aren't my thing. But I need to make myself clear. Kriska and Inya only have one another. I can't stand to see either of them drown in sorrow. Like hell that's gonna happen on my watch. Just a small girl. I won't let her think it's her fault someone love, she loves is going to die. I won't let her go through life blaming herself. Never. Inya. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go see Kriska. With her help, we probably can. Oh. <laughs> If he's smart, he wouldn't answer at all. But if he is going to answer, I would be like, No, my intention wasn't to sell it at all. My intention was to help humanity fight the beta the best ways possible. That's not true. Aesthetics wise, yeah, you can make an argument they might look too much alike, but I mean, this is covered in patent laws. Like, you can have two things that look very similar as long as you don't achieve those results by the like, exact same means. I mean, look at, um, if you are in America especially, because apparently breakfast cereals aren't a big thing in other countries. Essentially, a common breakfast food, a traditional common American breakfast food, it's very s straightforward and simple, which is why I would consider it's American, um, is to take a grain product you know, put it in a bowl and pour uh, cow milk on top of it and then eat it. Um, it's essentially, if you really get down to the nitty gritty, it would count as a stew because it's a, it's, you know, like chunks of material floating in a suspension, uh, 
Like, it's just in case, in this case, it's not broth and potatoes. It's, you know, corn usually and milk. Uh, but it's actually really good, especially because a lot of them are loaded with sugar. But there's a, comp a company that you might be familiar with in America called Malto Meal. Malto Meal essentially takes the formula, look, and flavor profile of name brand cereal, and then they change the formula just enough that they have a new patent on it where it looks and behaves and it even like essentially texturally will be exactly the same, but it has enough changes that they can actually consider it a different entity. And then they sell it usually cheaper in bulk. Um, and, and whether or not, like maybe there's a lot more intrinsic ties behind the scenes that I don't know about, but essentially why they allowed to do that when if you were to pour the two into like the two different breakfast cereals into two, into two bowls next to each other, it would be very difficult to just to know which was which you would probably tell that there's a difference that one isn't exactly the same as the other but you probably without insider knowledge wouldn't be able to know which one was the name brand and which one was the off brand so why would that not be the same case with the sheer new second and the black widow i mean i understand an appearance can look very similar and that can maybe set off a red flag that there's a some stolen proprietary technology but it's not a sign or indication of guilt. You have to be able to prove that they took parts from the Black Widow and technology from the Black Widow and installed it on. Now, that might actually be the case, but you could also argue that if they altered those materials enough, maybe updated them, modernized them, altered them enough in a way where they are no longer essentially functionally the Black Widow. In fact, you could even argue that if the parts couldn't be interchanged and put onto a Black Widow frame, and be able to function properly, that alone might be enough to say that this claim is technically invalid. But again, then you're starting to get to the 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 the, the um the idea, the patents of, of the idea rather than just like the superstructure. But he, like like the only reason I'm bringing this up is the investigators saying this that they the machines look so much alike that only works to a certain point. And so this is an invalid clause. It's essentially a straw man to try and like you know, make him sweat. The truth is going to be is when they take it apart, thoroughly examine it, and if they can see that the underlying structure is based purely on proprietary technology, that's the clincher. That's the problem. I like that. He's, he's, he's doing, he's playing the game very intelligently. It's not my fault you're actually being kind of dumb with this line of questions. So 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 because you could argue that those would be helpful in a hive because while there's no like a jammer and electronic equipment wouldn't have any effect on the beta you would be able to argue that excessive heat and vibrations very much could work against the beta because we know they use that in themselves so even if it seems weird it's like well there's no there's no evidence that it would actually help it'd be like but there's no evidence it doesn't so why can't we include it 人と同じで外見や形状といったものが全てではないということはさすがにご存知ですよね。もともと私は他人に説明するのが面倒な立ちなんですが、これもねあなた、いろんなところで何回も話しているのにですよ。<笑> Got it. And a good piece of information is that, um, and it's funny because, like, how do I know this stuff? It's because I watch some. Um, like real crime not like the podcast or whatever but there's actual like you can actually find and review like camera footage of interrogations and like look at the way that police actually interrogate people and from there they are they, they a common tactic is to repeatedly ask the same questions over and over again they want to exacerbate uh, ex uh, they want to make you feel exacerbated they want you to feel uncomfortable because they're waiting for a slip they're looking for an inconsistency that they can then really pile down on they also will do things well they'll ask you questions wait a day or two and then ask you the same questions and look for differences 
、嫌になりませんか傲岸無知って。調べもしないで自分の勝手な印象をもとにくだらないことを言ってくるんですから。Oh, snap! He's throwing shade. なので、分かったふりをされて、後から話が食い違い、同じことを何度も説明させられるのはごめんなんです。はい。You know what? I've really come around to Heinemann. He, like, or Heinemann. I really didn't like him because he felt like a snake in the grass, you know, very sneaky. And he is. But I've come around to liking him, especially right now. Because he's literally running circles around this investigator. Because, and he, know, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he's doing it in like, the perfect way. <sighs> I wasn't aware it was sarcasm. In fact, I, I know for a fact that these interviews are taken at face value because that's how information is presented. Thus, why would I be sarcastic? ニッポン側からの要請に答えたということですが、そのとおり、おかげさまでスケジュールに余裕が出たものでね。それが何か？この時期に追加回収要望が日本から出ること自体が怪しいと考えているんです。博士が事前に修正案を帝国に供与し、
議会の承認を得てね<笑>フレームこそタイプ94ですが外装コンセプトは同じ電子並走やその部品電波吸収体技術は YF23 も22ももともと日本のものを使っている So he's pointing out that the Black Widow was using a lot of parts and like development tactics from Japan, which also explains why there's a lot of similarities between the Black Widow, the Shiryu Segen, and Tekema Kazuchi's. Because like some of the original design concepts all originate from the same place. He's got you there. <laughs> それにしても不思議なのは、あなた方がなぜ今さら YF23 に関わっているかということです。まさか YF22 よりも YF23 が優れていたと、今さら認めるつもりじゃないでしょうね。It's actually a little scary how prepared he is for this. Like, these arguments are fantastic. <sighs> 仮に、私がステルス技術を含む YF23 のすべてを日本に渡す気だったとして、あなた、もう10年以上前の技術ですよ。うん。つまり、問題など元から存在しないというのが私の見解です。And this is actually pointing to the evidence that this whole, this whole thing is a facade or, or some kind of Political maneuver rather than an actual, like, oh, we're worried. It's like they were probably already completely aware, but there's something else that they're trying to intervene on. ですから、私を追求したいのなら、まずは論点を明瞭に示していただきたいとお願いしているのですよ。And at least in the United States, but I think in most countries that have, you know, fair and just laws, one of the things that's protected is your right to know what you're being accused of. No, no. わかりましたそれでは順に一つずつ丁寧に確認をしていくことにしましょう。He's probably gonna say treason, but treason can be easily overwritten or even dismissed because unless it's proven to be malicious or and, and substantially could have been detrimental to the nation, it's very unlikely you actually would get、uh, you know, like treason is such a severe charge. That mostly it's a charge that's offered up as a scare tactic rather than an actual, like, we're going to pursue this to actually prove you were treasonous. Because even in the United States, the result of treason is usually like、uh, revoking your citizenship and even potentially death. Zehi, so stay tadakitai. Ah, so no more any. Kudan no kitai desu ga. Ashita, jisen sote no unyo shiken wo okunai. ブラックウィドウ2との比較データを収集することになりましたよ。Hmm. ほうほう。ハルトウィック大佐、じきじきの申し出で、中立の立場である国連軍で検証を行うと、プロミネンス計画における二国間トラブルの政治問題化は、どうしても避けたいとか。コロナ・ハートウィック、huh? それは結構。何事もフェアであってほしいものですな。私も同感です。何事もフェアであるべきだ。初めてあなたと価値観を共有できましたね、博士。Well, that sounds like your fault because I'm sitting here looking at things in a reasonable way. If you're not on that level, are you sure you should be an investigator? それはそれは。フェアであることを担保するため、提案を受け入れの代わりに一つ条件を飲んでいただきました<笑>その運用試験国連軍所属であるインフィニティーズに行わせるという段取りになりましてねああ、oh, interesting so that's a sneaky thing that they've done there because they temporarily ordered the infinities to be on base for the blue flag test They're technically under the jurisdiction of the UN forces for now, which is ironic because now they're, going, they're per, like these prime, like stellar, pure blooded Americans are going to happen to be linchpin investigators by the supposed neutral party of the UN. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this. 
外見ではなく、so、this is where it could get a little sticky. Because the best arg- counter argument for similarities would actually be Yuya's participation since he was a tester on the, the, on the, the, the raptor itself. Like he, he knows the raptor inside out, upside down, and he's tested this one, so naturally he's going to tune it to be very similar, at least in the ways he likes. That could be problematic, especially if whoever the infinities are that are testing it, you know, are given like a nudge nudge or secret orders to fudge their numbers. ご要望が叶ってよかったですね。はかせ。うん。So sketch. あいた。No alarms? Good. Captain Sandex's entry perimeter is, is still, entry permit still in effect. Just act normal. We don't want to arouse suspicion. Normal. You got that? In a sense, this is a recon mission. We can't go around acting weird, even if Inya can help us avoid the patrolling MPs. This place is littered with security cameras, and we need to know the position of every last one of them before actually attempting to rescue Kriska. I have a feeling Sandek's not going to be too happy about this. Outsiders like me aren't allowed to even approach this top secret area of the base. The medical ward is the one of those places. This means we need to learn where the cameras are located and what base's layout looks like. Since my entry permit remains valid, I'll have, to have an excuse when people suspect I'm snooping around as long as Inya's with me. I can always say I came to check on Kriska because of the accident. I mean, that's exactly what I did for Inya after the terrorist attack. As long as I don't say a word about Kriska's impending disposal, I should be golden. Even if the MPs want to, want, want to get hardcore, I'm a, martial, I'm a material witness in an ongoing US investigation about a prob- potential breach of military secrets. The Soviets won't be able to keep me behind bars for more than a couple hours. Maybe I'm worrying too much? Inya is so used to sneaking around by now, she could lead me to Kriska in her sleep. I had an alibi so far, but now I'm clearly a trespasser. I'll be relying on Inya's abilities to stay out of the gulag. Still, a man suspected of leaking military secrets to the Soviets just so happens to waltz into one of their top secret military facilities. Imagine how that would look to anyone with half a brain. Guess I'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. This isn't a problem. I can just bring him to Captain Sendak and hope everything works out. Oh, yeah. Yuya, unfortunately, is making a horrifically stupid decision, but it's one I'm in full support of. Sometimes you need to be the stupid one. This is reckless as hell. Whatever's left of my reputation will be shot, and yet, I'm okay with that. Even if people deem me an American soldier, a Soviet spy, it's not going to put the XFJ program at any more risk. The Black Widow 2 incident will grow from a case of industrial espionage into an international issue between the US and the Soviet Union. Given the level of tension after the terrorist incident, the US government will want to tread very lightly. The Soviets are going to have to work overtime to make this thing go away, but my heart's not going to bleed for these inhuman pieces of crap. This is going to bring a ton of heat on her, though. The only part I actually feel bad about. The dude is right. The US brokes no compromise, whatever in matters of defense, national defense, and I'm about to find out. But since I'm a perpetrator, at least I could do is leave some means for the XFJ program in the Shirinui second to survive. Nothing else left for me at this point. No more thinking. It's time for action. Alright. I will go a little longer. What's up? Did you find her? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Is there a security room? Don't know about that, Chief. As much as I trust Inya to know what she's doing, I'm still nerve wracking my brain into, free, into, into a. I'm still. It's still nerve wracking to break into a freaking security room. Nope. Phew. Good job, Inya. Those pictures don't look great. There's one day on the right, which is like a p i c t looks like a. Maybe a person or just blankets in a cell? The one on the left, it looks like a bunch of blood stains! Are the MPs out on patrol? Every time I've been here, the facility is pretty much deserted. Kriska. Wait, where? Is that Kriska? Crap, I can't tell with the crappy low res camera. Okay, next we need to find out where the master key is located. The most logical place would be the safe, and that's. Hmm. Crap, where is the safe? The MPs have copies of the, uh, my, my, uh, the MPs have copies with them on patrol, but there's got to be a spare somewhere, right? 
We made it this far because Inya was leading the way, but the medical ward is actually under lock and key. Hmm. We're gonna need to improvise. Guess I'll have to search the master key from uh, scratch, snatch the master key from one of the MPs. Of course, we also need to get our hands on the release code for the electronic lock, but we'll have to deal with it when we come to it. The guards are packing heat and patrolling in pairs. One or two? My chances aren't good. Even if I take them by surprise, we've got to come up with a plan. I could retrace my steps and go back to the Argus MP station, pick up a bunch of stun grenades and tasers and other non-lethal stuff. Huh. No, forget it. Non-lethal weapons aren't going to be much help against a bunch of MPs wearing full body armor. Yuya, これ... A mic for internal broadcasts? Oh yeah, if, if for use in case of emergency or stuff like that. Should be able to reach Kriska's room in the medical ward that way. Yeah, at the very least she could hear my message. Yuya, huh? Kriska, Crisco's medical ward is soundproof, but that doesn't make much matter much when the sound's coming from the speakers. The guards will notice for sure. Talking to Crisco won't make it any easier for us to spring her from the cell. It's the only it's the other way around. Today was supposed to be recon, laying the groundwork of a full blown rescue mission. Uh, can you explain to her, or is it really, 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 really important? Hmm. We should count ourselves lucky we made it this far without being spotted. If we want to rescue Crisco, we can't take any chances. Crap, even if everything goes right, there's still one hell of a gamble. Captain Sendex, the kind of man who oversees human experiments with a sink without a single pang of conscience. Not true. I think he does. I think he's human, and I think he feels badly, but he's a, he's a man who prioritizes like need and necessity over emotion. God knows what he might do if Anya finds out she brought me to a highly confidential section of the base. Well. But as I've told myself before, no more thinking. If I'm gonna do this, I have to jump in with both feet. Oh gosh, I'm already past the point of no return. There's no reason to chicken out now. I need to confirm whether Anya is telling the truth or not. My actions could unleash a political storm of biblical proportions, but none of that matters. Oh gosh, Yuya. Okay, let's do this. Gotta figure out where Crisco's room is. Room number first. 301. Crisco, can you hear me? Crisco, can you hear me, Crisco? It's me, you, your bridges. If you can hear my voice, just give me a sign or something. Smooth sailing so far. Seems no one monitoring the medical ward, or there would be guards knocking on our door already. Kriska, can you hear me? <laughs> if you can, please give me a sign. <laughs> Alright. I heard the whole story from Inya. <laughs> About your powers? What have they done to you? Look, I'll get you out of here. <laughs> yeah, she's clearly upset. There's more going on here than what meets the eye. Kriska, I'm sorry, but... Shut up! You don't need me, but I need you, and Inya does too. So I'm gonna help you. Not because I've what anybody else thinks, but because it's what I want to do. I'll help you break out of there. I swear, I'll tear down the cell myself if I have to. <laughs> and then the three of us will leave together. Yuya, what? Uh... Uh... 
Son of a bee. Wait for me, Kriska. I'll be back, I promise you. Lead the way. Get out of there. Because we love you! That's a load off my mind. By the time we snuck into the base until our escape somehow, we didn't run into anybody, not a soul, all thanks to Inya's powers. That's how she used the randomly pop up near Argus hanger on all over the base. <laughs> Can mind reading be put to good use against the beta? Beats me, but against other humans? Well, she should be invincible. Sorry, Teresa. You never stood a chance. Oh man, she would blow a gasket if she ever found out. In fact, everyone else would too! <laughs> Inya, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully now. You need to go back to the institution. Go, miss go missing for too long, they'll raise the alert level. Once that happens, there's not a thing we can do for Kriska. Got that? Oh. We gotta think big, long term. I'll be back the moment everything's in place, I promise. Until then, wait for me at the facility. Uh. You can tell when I'm getting close, right? As soon as you sense me, start getting you and Kriska's fortified suits ready. Inya should be able to get her hands on a pair of fortified suits without raising any suspicions. That way, if they're shot, they'll end up with broken bones, not dead. And a shootout's the worst case scenario, but it doesn't hurt to be prepared. And a fortified suit stays a million times more useful than a BDU anyway. My TSF should still have access to the encrypted line we used to talk to each other during the terrorist attack. I'll contact you that way. We clear? <sighs> Great. Now go back and stay put. I'll get in touch with you soon. Yeah. What is it? Arigato. Don't mention it. Inya. I know for a fact I can sneak into the Soviet facilities. In that sense, today's recon was frightfully fright, uh, fruitful enough. The problem is step two of the plan, how to break into a top security medical ward. Maybe simple as best? Steal a master key from one of the guards, do some work on a guy to get electronic lock password out of him? Hell, there could be no need for interrogation. Clearly electronic locks weren't enough to keep Inya in place. Maybe she's reading their minds on a regular basis. Hmm. Anyway, once we've trespassed into the highly confidential area, visiting Crisco won't cut it as an excuse. And if the MPs find us we're off, we're, we, and we offer resistance, it's going to end up in a firefight. I might have to shoot back. Might have to kill someone with my own two hands. Not a TSF co-pilot standing between us. I'll be ending the life of another human being. Someone with family and friends. Duty or, con or country won't excuse my actions. Not when I'll be killing them to suit my own needs. I'll need a gun. What else? Oh yeah, need to bring them to safety once we've escaped. The question is, where? Should I take them to the UN in the hopes that we can denounce the Soviet's human experimentation program as an atrocity? Or maybe it'd be better to bring them to the US? Nah, forget it. I can make up my mind once I've broken them out. Bad idea to put the cart, uh, pull the cart before the horse. I don't know! I think having a destination is a pretty important part of a plan. Maybe that's just me. Should work on a plan and getting the equipment ready instead. It's you again. Well, well fetch. <laughs> he knows that what, what we did. That's really bad. That's really bad. He's got this, now he's, he's got us dangling in his fingers, like he could just drop us off a precipice anytime he wants. And they could use it as a fa uh, to gain fa favor at the Soviets. And he knows, he, he's holding the XFJ program and Kriska's safety in his hand right now. He's got us so bent over, like, we're essentially looking, su we're essentially submissive and breedable. It's just, it's gonna be bad. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Hey, first line right here, totally true. But we're gonna end here for now. We'll we'll dive into this rat's nest in a second. Fetch me. Alright, so 
Not sh not exactly what I expected for this episode. Really interested to see where it's going to go with this. I want to rescue Kriska, but frankly, I just don't know what we could do. The only thing I could see out of Weller's intervention here is that he might, like... Maybe he's going to try and coordinate and ask us, like, if we, if we, like... Maybe if we cooperate with the XFJ program with him, he'll give us the resources to rescue Kriska. So essentially, it becomes the choice between the XFJ program and Kriska. And that's like an impossible choice. How do you even choose that? That's me. I feel so bad for you, Yuya. Yeah, you're really just, you're really in a tough spot. So we'll have to just see what happens, but I'm excited. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully I had a good time watching the eclipse. I'm sure I'll post something. It's hard to take pictures of an eclipse that aren't terrible, like unless you have good equipment, which I don't have. So I doubt I'll be able to do much more than Maybe share a brief community post or something when it happens, but regardless of that, I'm looking forward to seeing an eclipse if I can. I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out. <sighs> Boom. I also am just really grateful to each and every one of you. Thanks for watching the video, for being a part of it, being a, by participating in the community, watch, uh, like, you know, being instrumental in getting me to this far and helping me accomplish this much. It means so much to me, and I just hope I'm continuing to bring content that you like to come back to and that as I push forward that not only will I make content that keeps making you want to come back but hopefully makes you more and more excited to watch it. That's the best goal I could shoot for is just to continue to improve and with like your support that helps and then with your comments that, in, that improvement just gets all the much better so thank you and especially thank you to the patrons and members because you guys are setting a foundation of a, of a kind of like a security that helps me feel more confident in pursuing more, you know, questionable takes, maybe games that are not as likely to be as like supportable on the platform. There's a lot of stuff I can post on YouTube, but couldn't get monetized. And like just the fact that I receive a little bit of help from some of you means that I really kind of toss a lot of those concerns aside. I always want to like build the channel as if it's a like a like a massive success already because like you know good practice you know make sure I'm I'm always like working and like m like making things lay out in a way that makes sense for like whether the channel is small or massively successful I want it to feel the same um, and that's one of the key aspects to having a patron and the membership is that. There are going to be times, and there are several series on the channel, in fact, that have no support whatsoever on YouTube. In fact, they get suppressed by YouTube. And one of the sad casualties is the Science Gate. That one got super suppressed because uh, while I initially got permission to post the content and to even have monetization on it, when um, Chuby, uh, what, what's the what's the company? It's like like it's one of the Tunesoft, I think. When the company uh, got bought out. They went and just like just obliterated and just claimed everything and suppressed all the videos. I'm lucky they didn't delete my channel because they were they were threatening to. So having stuff like Patreon and memberships really helps with that. So thank you. And I'm sorry I'm ranting too long for this outro. Have a great day. Thank you so much. And until this video watching me, have you seen me next? I'll see you there.